Hey everybody, Barry here again. Well, burning through it is pretty good. Uh, no major hiccups, which is phenomenal, but odd. I'm expecting something to catch fire or split in two, anyway. Drive shaft, drive shaft, drive shaft, drive shaft. This is what I'm gonna be at tonight. I'm gonna shorten that drive shaft 14 inches and um, I'm not gonna weld it. I might put a tack in it or something like that to hold it together and keep the caps in phase. I'm not gonna finish weld it until I know that the suspension is done um i know that the cross member is done for the steady bearing everything's bolted up there solid in place that way if it's still an inch too long or a half an inch too long i can just pop the end out cut it down an inch weld it back in uh, i don't like doing steps three and four before i finish one and two but i still want to keep the train moving so i'm going to go ahead and cut it off anyway 14 inches is the minimum that it needs to be cut off and if it's a touch too short it's not a big deal because the slip yokes both slip yokes actually can take up a quarter inch or a half an inch each of room uh so anyway i'm going to start this off with don't do this at home uh, and if you do you know have somebody qualified weld it get it balanced that's always a good thing now i don't know if it's necessarily for safety but if it's way out of balance i guess it could break and go up through the floor and spit it aside and hit somebody but uh yeah, it's not necessarily recommended to um, modify something that's going to be spinning at like 7,000 RPM plus when you're in fourth gear and faster again if you're on the limiter in fifth gear. So, you know, uh, if you're going to do this, please don't blame me when it breaks. But with that out of the way, I am going to take 14 inches off of this. What I always do is shave down this weld with a grinder some light on there we go shave down this weld right here with a grinder just till it's nice and flat and then get a zip disc and slowly cut it down until you're down past the weld and then knock the yoke off the pipe it's not hard to do because as long as you cut it in the right spot you're going to cut through the weld directly down through the pipe where it goes on over the slip fit and these drive shafts normally the yoke has about an inch or so of pipe that actually goes inside and fits snug into the drive shaft. So you pop it off, hit it on the ends. Don't beat up the yokes or anything. Don't beat up the ends where the U-joints go in. Just take your time knocking it off. You'll see a crack start to open up if you're doing it correctly and you got to cut deep enough. If you cut it a little bit too deep, like 16th of an inch, you're safe because they're fairly thick, but you should know that the pipe is only like 16 gauge uh, or maybe 332nd thick. So if your wheel is in this far, you're probably gone too far. And after that, then I'll show you a trick that I use to get a perfectly straight cut on pipe. It's like the easiest thing in the world. Just grab a piece of paper and wrap it around, line up the two edges where they meet and then mark it, cut it. And we'll talk about phasing. This is gonna be fun. It's been a while since I did a drive shaft like this. I'm after shortening probably six now, so I figured out what not to do and what makes stuff easier, that kind of thing. And hopefully, if it's your first time, it'll help you. If not, just sit back and relax and enjoy the show. Sometimes it takes a couple tries to get it caught in the right position. I caught ahead of the, or right in the middle of the weld actually, and it wasn't letting go, so I caught back from the weld a little bit, and we can see that the pipe is starting to let go. So a couple of good cracks with this, and out it comes. So the pipe isn't real thick. So I'll go ahead and clean up what I had left on there. It's 
Step one, remove the yolk without destroying it. Check. It came out nice. Okay with it. Cleaned it up with the grinder. Now, uh, I can go ahead to the easy stuff. This is what makes me nervous because I don't like ruining these. I've done it before, it sucks. Especially when I only have one. Now, I can go ahead and measure back 14 inches. Mark it, cut it off. Okay, forgive me if this is an awkward angle, but the first step is to mark where we need to cut. And I'm gonna mark right on 14 inches because that's where we need to be. This here is just some old cardstock, and I marked which side is the actual cut edge because if I use this edge that I cut with scissors, it's gonna mess up. So you make your cardstock long enough so that it can wrap around itself like this, and now you'll get to see how this works. So what you do, and this works for any pipe, is wrap it around, and you can see here that this is not even. If I started cutting here now and went around, by the time I got up to here, I'd be a quarter inch off. So what you do is you keep going around and wrapping it around until, when I'm on the mark, until both sides of the sheet are lined up perfectly. Now this will take a couple tries. But here we go. Now you can see that it's completely seamless the whole way around. I forgot to take tape off the roll. Make sure nothing moved. And run a seam of tape over your line. And now, with it taped here, the paper isn't going to separate. So you'll know that as long as this tape doesn't tear or move, your line is going to be perfectly straight. So now you can adjust it to the length that you need, that kind of thing. So check measurement. Right on 14 inches. Now, so that the paper doesn't move, you can put a couple pieces around on this side because this is not going to be the side you're going to cut. Nothing's going to move now. It's all good. Now normally what I do is just slowly take my time and trace it with the grinder with a very thin zip disc. Just scar the metal so that you've got a nice groove that you can follow and then cut it off. Try to stay over on the very edge of the paper because if you cut into the paper then you don't know if you're a sixteenth of an inch in or out so if you never touch the wheel to the paper but keep your cut on the very edge it'll always be straight. After you get your track made now your wheel is always going to sit in that groove and your grinder wheel won't veer off on you. Well, I just noticed that there's cardboard in here. That's kind of cool. I guess it absorbs some vibration, maybe some heat. So I'm gonna see if I can hook some of that cardboard out. Maybe I'll just take it all out and um, throw it away because I don't want to weld in there near it. From the factory, the cardboard was back about eight inches. So when they welded this, it didn't matter. Uh, or maybe I'll just leave it in the half inch or so and weld it because it's not gonna be able to breathe anyway. So it won't actually burn. Science. Uh, I'm gonna hook some of this hair out, stuff the yolk in, and see how it lines up on the rear end. I might actually have a different plan. So I was looking at that cardboard, and in there it stops, 
it's probably this long and why not keep it and then i found this thing which is an old bottle of valve grinding compound that fits like perfect so yeah well, almost perfect oh, oh, oh now the cap's stuck in <laughs> uh look it might work it might work i might lose the cap and i might have to stay in there forever but there's something Tell me how sketchy it is. That I always get on the concrete floor, put the caps down on the floor and rock it. And if you can rock the drive shaft easily, that means the caps are out of phase and you just keep tapping around back and forth until it won't rock like it's not right now. It stops. So that would mean that the caps are phased Assuming the floor wasn't poured like this, if you're on a really rough floor, don't bother. See if you can find a pane of glass or something. And that's how I always phase U joints. It works really well. I haven't had any vibrations, but you know, obviously there's better ways of doing it. On a lathe with weights and you know, that kind of thing. I'm not knocking anybody who brings a dry shaft to the shop and gets it done because then you know exactly what you have. But in a pinch or you know, in a hot rod situation where you want to make your own stuff, there's just another way. Let's test fit it. I haven't tried it yet, but I did have to go ahead and put this in a slip yoke because it's got a master spline on it. So let's try this end. Take out some bolts that I forgot to take out. So or back up at a half an inch or so. So with this spline fully engaged, this one here is out about half an inch. That is sweet. I am actually astounded at how well this all fits. That is awesome. It fits wicked. This obviously is not set you know, it's it's not actually held on to anything. This is at six degrees. This is at eight degrees. So I'm in the ballpark. I just need to make my cross member to bolt this too. We're clearing the floor. Everything is all good there. Lots of slip yoke. And it looks like basically nothing, just the hump of the rear end is in under the stow and go compartment which is the lowest point of the van. This is wicked. That is absolutely awesome. Oh, I cannot wait. I cannot wait, cannot wait to get out doing burnouts. This is all coming together very nicely. This would not have come together so well without Dean digging up that drive shaft for me. Thanks man, that's absolutely perfect that I can use the same drive shaft from the same vehicle, how I know what U-joints I need to buy. It's not mismatched parts. What I was gonna use was this rear half of a drive shaft from an F-150, this front half of a drive shaft from like a 1950s Chev truck. And it would have worked, but it would have been a bit of a pain. Plus the one drive shaft had a dent in it, that kind of thing. So it's a little bit wary about it. This is gonna work perfect. Ah, wicked. Now I got an hour or so left and I don't want to tackle the cross member until I have the right materials, which is a piece of maybe one by two steel or inch and a half by one, something like that. And uh, I'll pick that up tomorrow. So I think I'll go ahead and smack in a couple of U-joints and see if I can get this center support bearing in. This one here is for 35 millimeter shaft. Part number is HB88107-A, national. There is another bigger one. That's for the heavy duty drive shaft, which is 40 millimeters. And I can't remember. Uh, HB88508-A is actually the part number on that one. And here's this unit. So this one here is it's a nice unit. Nice and solid. It's got a flange on the bottom and a flange on top. A lot of them don't have this. And this one's actually directional. It says the spot with the open cup goes up toward the engine. So I'll make sure to put that one on correctly. 
pulling the drive shaft out and put some new parts in it. Well, I gotta say, that looks good. New U-joints in it, new center support bearing, everything all cleaned up. I am gonna paint the drive shaft also, the same thing as I did with my chef one, wherever I put that, actually. I'll uh, clean it up, wire wheel it, just make sure there's no flaky rust on it, give it a coat of paint, that will look really good. I'd say I'll probably do that when I do the rear end and everything. But as of right now, the drive line is pretty much done besides welding. Like I said, I'm not going to finish weld it until I know that the center support bearing is all hung. Everything is in place permanently. Then I'll be sure that I've got enough slip yoke, which I'm like 99.9% .9 sure I do anyway. Because this slip yoke here can go up here and completely bottom out. So it's like, there's lots of room. So I'm just walking to go weld now, but I'm not going to because I've been in this position before and it always bites me. So I'm gonna finish her up here for tonight, go clean up a little bit, go home, eat some supper and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks for watching everybody. Have a good night.